Welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Please support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee uh, so we can continue to bring you this series. Subscribe and turn on your notification buttons if you've not yet done so. Please don't forget to check out our new website, sankofastorybooks.com, for history, Afrocentric stories, and other resources for our children. Now, the Zulu were descended from the Unguni, a Bantu group that established around the White Mfolozi River in southern Africa during the 17th century. Mguni is believed to be the progenitor of many southern African groups that descended from the Unguni group, including the Zulu. Now, the name of the progenitor, Mguni, is spelled M-N-G-U-N-I, while the name of the group is Unguni, spelled N-G-U-N-I. So, the Unguni, like other Bantu groups, migrated from Western Africa. The word Bantu is an inclusive, all-embracing term which describes over 400 different ethnic groups in Africa that were united, that are united by a common language family and some shared customs. Please go and watch our episode on the Bantu if you've not yet done so. Now, during the initial migration of the Bantu people, which took place between approximately 5,000 and 1,500 years ago, the, the Bantu spread across most of Central, Eastern, and Southern Africa. And as they migrated, they evolved various languages, lifestyles, and technological innovations such as pottery, making and the, the use of large stone tools, and then farming and metallurgy. Some Bantu groups which arrived in the Southern African area evolved into several clans, one of which according to oral tradition was the Zulu clan. Oral tradition has it that the original Zulu chiefdom was established in the 17th century by Malandela and that it was his son, Zulu, who gave his name to the people. The word Zulu means heaven. So the people became known as the Amazulu, the people of heaven. They were initially a relatively simple group until the great Shaka became their king in 1816. The Zulu became part of the Mteltwa Confederacy under their leader, Diginsweyo, who reigned from 1809 to 1817. Please apologies for mispronouncing uh, any names here. Um, I do not speak Zulu, <laughs> but I have great respect for, for the language and culture. Anyway, for reasons which are uh, now obscure, Shaka was sent away from the clan by his father, but found refuge with the powerful Diginswayu, who, as I earlier said, was the king of the Mteltwa confederacy. It was while with uh, Diginswayu that Shaka acquired the skills which later served him well as a formidable statesman and a soldier. After the Genswayo's death, Shaka was able to establish his people's dominance over their neighbors. Within about 12 short years, Shaka turned the small Zulu chiefdom into an empire, either by persuading or conquering the neighboring kingdoms. By using a well-disciplined and efficient fighting force, he expanded the kingdom's area in the north from roughly the Mzinkulu River and up to the Tuligela River in the south. 
and uh, uh, and then in the north up to the Draxenberg Mountains, and then eastward to the coast. The land was a fertile grassland, beautiful landscape of rolling hills and deep river gorges. It's still one of the most stunning places on earth uh, to visit. <laughs> This period during which Shaka was building the empire is known as the Mfekane or the crushing because the kingdoms and chiefdoms that refused to join the Zulu empire were either forced to flee or were destroyed. Shaka's empire building succeeded because of a number of strategi uh, strategies which he innovated. One of such strategies was the introduction of a system of conscription and young people who tried to avoid being conscripted were forcibly removed from their homes and trained into soldiers that were loyal to the crown. Another one of uh, Shaka's uh, strategies was to divide up his soldiers into regiments known as Amabutu or age groups to defend a system of fortified settlements, which Shaka also established, known as Amakanda. Their job was to guard against raiders and provide protection uh, for refugees, people who were seeking refuge under, under him and his uh, new empire. He also introduced advanced fighting methods and weapons like the short uh, stabbing spear, which he used to replace the long throwing ones. He was apparently a most talented warrior because he came up with a unique, uh, he also came up with a unique battle formation known as the horns of the buffalo, which was effective in building the Zulu empire. Shaka reigned from 1816 to 1828 when he was assassinated and succeeded by his half-brother, Dingane. It was during Dingane's reign that the Zulu Empire was, in, was penetrated by the British as well as the, the Boers. Although he only reigned for 12 years, Shaka left large footprints in the way he revolutionized the Zulu art of warfare and turned the kingdom into an empire. He was also the one who began the process of shaping the identity of the Zulu nation into the admirable one that we now know. The Zulus are also closely related to other groups like the Ntobela. Today, Zulu land spreads over the KwaZulu Natal. Thanks for watching. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee uh, so we can continue to bring you this series. Turn on your notification buttons and um, share. Feel free to share our videos. But please don't forget to check out our new website, SankofaStoryBooks.com, for history. Afrocentric stories and other resources for our children. See you next time.